Leo, I'm excited to catch up with you here at MWC Las Vegas, hear about the latest and greatest from Matt Singh. But before we look ahead, maybe you can give us a little historical reference point here. You know, antenna technology hasn't really changed that much mm -hmm. over the past 30 years, but you guys have done some really pioneering work with the lens antenna. So maybe just take us through it. Yeah, Sean, so um, we actually founded the company back in 2006. Uh, an idea being as we were very fascinated by this whole concept of using a RF lens for communication instead of traditional dish antennas or panel antennas. And the basic idea is that it, in a sense it works like your eye. And to me, nature is always the best engineer. And if you look at how nature focuses uh, waves in terms of light waves, it uses a lens. Just like your eye can receive multiple signals from every direction, you can build an antenna on the same principle. And so using refraction instead of reflection like a dish or a phased array, uh, you, you can create a large lens, a small lens, all different types of lenses that can send multiple independent, truly independent signals simultaneously. So in the sense of something like satellite communication, which was our first inspiration actually for the company, um, you could replace, let's say, 50, 60 dish antennas just with a single lens antenna. So we found that to be very exciting in terms of potential technology. And we looked at what the challenges were and why the technology wasn't actually um, developed and used by people largely. And key problem was actually materials. So actually part of the name of Matt's comes from material. Uh, we developed and patented a brand new type of metamaterial, which allowed us to create these new types of RF lenses and kind of breathe life into lens technology and uh, communication technology. So I was kind of looking through my archives and I remember the first time I encountered a Matt Singh mm -hmm. antenna was the Austin City Limits Festival mm -hmm. in 2016. Mm -hmm. And I know you all really made a name for yourself at these large outdoor events, mm -hmm. but now you're also present in a number of NFL venues, for instance. So maybe tell us a little bit about that transition from uh, events to venues. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. So I mean, for us, you can imagine, I mean, we, we started this company Initially, a small family started company, developed this technology, developed new materials, and finally saw a product which had potential use in telecommunications. Telecommunications key challenge at the time was capacity, and I think that's still an ongoing challenge with cell phones getting better and better. Uh, and so the first time we ever managed to get one of our antennas to be used actually widely by an operator uh, is we wanted to solve the most challenging problem. Uh, and at the time, well, we were in California, and uh, there was a big music festival happening in the desert, 200,000 people, very little infrastructure, everybody wanted to text and stream, uh, challenging technical problem. And we got the opportunity to put up one of our antennas. It was the first time they had breakthrough record data, everybody was able to connect. Uh, and so that was a way for us to basically prove the technology and the concept and then subsequently, of course, other music festivals like Austin City Limits and across the whole of U.S. And then we saw the benefit of, um, you know, if we can use these lenses for these large types of festivals and music festivals, you can apply the same advantages for other environments. And another challenging environment is stadiums and arenas. And we thought, why not, instead of, you know, Typically, one approach now is to place antennas around the stadiums, maybe under the seats and the rails. We thought with lens, it works like a projector. We can create many different beams, almost like a projector. Why not put the waves where you put all the other waves? Sound waves, light waves, put it at the top, and one lens can create many, many different beams and sectors from a single antenna, cover the whole stadium. Great, quick solution to create a lot of capacity. And so that was kind of our transition into venues, uh, which also was, has been quite successful, been very fortunate there too. And then recently we've actually adapted the same exact principle, same technology, but let's say in a more smaller version for macro. So the same problems exist on regular cell sites with capacity and the need for better performance. And instead of adding additional cell sites, which as you know can be time consuming and expensive, our proposal is you can put a matching antenna which has a small lens inside and instantly boost capacity, performance, different types of bands. So that's been kind of the transition. Yeah, let's talk a little bit more about how you're approaching operators' macro networks. Mm -hmm. I guess um, the context would be we're in sort of the back half of 5G, the initial build-outs mm -hmm. happen, so now the focus is on densification, expansion, and then, uh, you know, really all of that wrapped around TCO, trying to, you know, deliver a differentiated experience to their end user mm -hmm. while saving as much money as possible. So right. how do you fit into that market? Yeah, so great question. I mean, to me, honestly, it's the same challenges 
on a different scale that we saw in events, venues, and you know, this type of previous experiences we had with the technology. As you mentioned, of course, uh, we're more in the back, head, uh, back part of the rollout for 5G, but nonetheless, there still uh, is a lot of capacity issues throughout the macro network. So performance has been a, a focus, but if you have performance but no capacity, you're not serving enough users, that's still a challenge. So with Lens, actually, we created a product like uh, what we mentioned. We saw some of our larger lenses used for events being placed in macro environments, which to us was initially also surprising. So we decided to design actually a product line which visually has similar shape and size to your standard panel antennas. Therefore, it makes it easier for our customers to put up and switch regular antennas with, say, a matching antenna, similar shape and sizes. But inside has lens technology and brings the same kind of benefits where you can get multiple beams, so instantly you can get three, four, five times the capacity from your cell site. Lens, of course, is also broadband, so we can put different bands, 4G and 5G, on the same antenna, again, reducing the amount of antennas and infrastructure needed. Uh, and Lens provides very clean RF with very high isolation, therefore providing very good throughput. So to us, that was kind of the key thing to help them solve quickly in terms of you know, total cost of ownership, is instead of building additional sites, how can you solve capacity and performance and to us, the solution was this new product line, um, which is lens-based again. And just by switching out antennas, you can get all those benefits. Now, are you focused primarily on sort of these dense urban mm -hmm. areas where there's already existing capacity constraints? Are you also looking at uh, rural and suburban areas? It's a great question. So actually, we had a large, um, I believe the technology can be implied in rural, in urban, suburban. The key is that it's efficient. So one antenna does more. Uh, and so when you're looking at a rural environment, again, you need fewer antennas, you need fewer towers. Our antennas are very high gain because it's very precise RF control, so we are able to transmit the signal further and with a cleaner RF. So actually for rural application, it also becomes a very uh, useful thing for such things as fixed wireless access, for example, because you can get a lot of capacity, throughput, and again, fewer sites and locations. Uh, we've done some projects around the world where it was heavily used for um, a country's full uh, rural deployment across the whole country. It's been very successful over there as well. Well, so, I mean, to play this back to you, what I'm mm -hmm. hearing is, is hardware-based differentiation. It's not something yes. we see a lot of, but, uh, I mean, a really compelling value proposition. So, I guess, what would you leave our audience with? Yeah, so, I, I think, I mean, honestly, that's one of the things I always <laughs> focused on as well, is I think nowadays people have been very used to the same baseline technology in terms of antennas, where the physics was also based on the same kind of physics. And therefore, differentiator became software, optimization, things like that. But in my mind, if your hardware performs really well and you can control the RF really well, you could have a much easier time uh, with capacity performance where you don't need to do a lot of optimization and uh, software use. So I think for us, I mean, the key thing I'd like to mention is this is fundamentally a very different approach to antennas. It's almost like a gas car, an electric car. It's just built on a very different physics principle. And I believe that it provides an ideal uh, advantage for customers where you can now use uh, new technology with less hardware to provide better results, capacity, and performance. Excellent. Well, Leo, I really appreciate you taking the time to Thank catch you, up sure. with me and share your message with our audience. Appreciate it. Thank you.